Please, please, no cameras. I'm very shy. I'm not seeking any attention for my new book, Howard Stern Comes Again. Leave me alone. Stern comes again. We are happy to welcome back to the view the amazing Howard Stern. <laughs> Everyone is so literary. People get excited when yeah, they write that's books. That's right. It's they unbelievable. Do. Yeah, they right. do. First of all, Whoopi, of course, I know you. Whoopi is in my book. Yes. She is, yeah. uh, she is in there. Joy, you look great. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not in the book. Now, Sonny, I never met you no, before. No. Like, this is a new cast for no, me, this, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, And Megan, of course, I know you, but, uh, you know, and, and, and now who's gone? Uh, Julie Chambunbez, right? She's... <laughs> She married Les. That was a big I, mistake. Oh, why fire her? Why did you guys fire her? We didn't. Her? She just wasn't on oh, this show. Oh, she's not on this show. I didn't no. know that. No. <laughs> Joy, come on. <laughs> well, this is, first of all, Megan, I want to, and on a serious note, I want to bring the show down, but I want to, I wanted to say about your father, I got to meet him uh, uh, and uh, a couple of years ago, and I got to thank him for his service and how much he meant to me and how much uh, he gave to this country, and I really uh, am excited to be here with you, and just I offer my condolences. <laughs> such a gentleman. I really then, was. For once, I was a gentleman around <laughs> your father. And then uh, I went on your show, and I thought he was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. I remember being like, I'm going on Howard Stern, and it's still one of the highlights of my we career. We had a good time. Down. Great, great. <clears throat> Everyone should do it. It's an incredible experience. You're the king of all media. And Sonny, where have you been hiding? What's going on I've with you? I've been hiding a little bit yeah. from you. And, and everyone says you look like today. You got a little extra dressed up for the show. I did, for you, Howard. That's okay. not true. Well, just, that's, that's not, not true. She just looks like she just came from the club, wherever just the club is. Just for you. Is. Always I like, wanted really. to kind of channel you. No, well, you're always. channeling me. <laughs> and Whoopi, I was worried about you because they said you were septic. And that doesn't... I shook your hand. I'm really worried. Yes. <laughs> She's not worried. Don't what does worry septic now. Mean? It worried. means that you have poison really running through your blood. It was really? quite bad. Do you have any that hand sanitizer? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. You're okay. Though, yes, right? I lick your fingers. It'll be I'm, fine. You know, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> well, don't be too nervous. Listen. Yes. I know that this is rare for you. You don't like really doing a whole bunch of other people's shows. Because so we want to. I love being yes. in the studio. Yes. I love it. I'm safe there. I yes. talk to Robin on the radio. You know, I don't have anybody attacking me. Yeah. I never know with you, Dennis. <laughs> you know, you can do it. But no, it's very safe. It's yeah. gotten into a very nice rhythm. Yeah. So to come on here, you know, when you write a book, they say come on the view because you guys evidently sell books. You we better. We sell a lot of books. All right. Yes, we do. Our audience, is, yes, our audience reads. Your, your audience reads? Yes. Yeah. Gee, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I believe that. I can see these people are, are very literate. <laughs> I um, no, but I was excited about writing a book, and I believe in the book, and I'm so proud of the book that I said I better come on the well, view. Well, the book and leave is fantastic. Yeah, Thank actually. you. Thank yeah. you for it's saying fantastic. that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Here's it the shocking. A lot of your, it has a lot of his interviews and they're fantastic well this is the shocking part of it every time i wrote a book in the past i wrote about me right this time i'm writing about other people yeah. i'm celebrating the fact that maybe i grew up a little bit and i have had this wonderful experience at sirius xm 
and the wonderful experiences that when someone like Whoopi comes on or anybody comes in for an hour and a half sometimes we mm -hmm. can just sit and talk yes. yeah and I really truly believe when I went over there I had a, a unique opportunity I said wow this is something special I can sit with someone I can get to know them a lot of times if I go out to dinner with someone I ask these questions and we get into this great conversation and it's a one-on-one -on -one thing and it's so powerful what if I could bring that to radio would it be compelling and a lot of my guests say they felt like oh I got to express myself in a new way because the art of the interview sometimes is dead. But it has a little bit about you also when you introduce each chapter, and it also has a little bit about you in the questions yeah. that you ask. Yeah, the questions it, it, I ask, I think you get to know me through the questions I ask. So. And you can see I'm in psychoanalysis because at times I sound like I'm a psychoanalyst. Thank God. It's true. Thank God, Thank God you're in psychoanalysis. I went into psychoanalysis <laughs> four days a week. Yeah, I barely yeah. had time to like... Like Woody Allen. Like Woody Allen. Yeah. I was on that, you know, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It really was. It opened yeah. my mind to a a lot of things and I don't think I could have been as empathic with my guests uh, we just had some fabulous people and people open up I mean yeah. Whoopi I, I mean I didn't know that Whoopi had a problem with drugs I included mm -hmm. you in that mm -hmm. and and Whoopi kind of opened up and said that uh, it was a, a pretty serious uh, heroin habit mm -hmm. and that you had to take all kinds of jobs yeah. in order to support that habit yeah. and you know it, it really it's kind of sad how we don't get to know each other. Yeah. And even with some of these people who are so accomplished, like Jerry Seinfeld or Amy Poehler, mm -hmm. they're so accomplished, but you forget how hard they work to get where mm -hmm. they, you know, yeah. where they got. Right. And, and you also don't get to know them as people. Yeah. And because we're on the internet bashing everyone and bashing every person, you can forget that these are people. Yeah. And, and you know, I was thinking, the, the first person I, I chose for the book was Madonna. And when you sit and listen to her story mm. after her mother died and what she went through and how she came to New York City to be a dancer. Yeah. And then suddenly she moves into uh, Manhattan. She has a guy drop her off in a cab. She mm -hmm. says, take me to the center. She has nowhere to live. She has no financial support. The guy drops her off in Times Square. And she says to me, I met a guy in Times Square and he invited me into his apartment and I stayed with him for a couple of days. Really? And you, yeah, and you think about and that. That man was Harvey Weinstein. Well, <laughs> but, when you, but you know, it, that was the other dilemma with the book. Yeah. I put Harvey Weinstein yeah. in the book. Oh, yeah. And I really, I really struggled with that. And because I know the women who were affected by him and attacked by him, if they see him getting attention in a book, is that me supporting him? And I went back and forth on it. But at the end of the day, I thought it was valuable. Uh -huh. Because I got, him to, I got him to open up at that time, not only about his life and about how he chooses movies. And he, you know, here was a guy, an unpopular kid who actually made it. But when I'm sitting there, I asked him about the casting couch. Uh -huh. And I said to him, Harvey, what goes on? Yeah. Do you seduce women? Do you make women give you sex for parts? Do you do this kind of thing? And he turned to me like a choir boy. And he said, Howard, I can't do that. Do you know what would happen to my films? Do you know what would happen to my career? Oh. And that doesn't happen to the producer, maybe the directors, but not the producer. So, okay, fast forward to now, and we read it, and what the hypocrisy is, he knows the right thing to say. Mm. He knew the right thing to yeah. do, yeah. and yet we see what happened. So I put him in the book, uh, and, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. And all of these people, I think there's something to be did learned. Did you think yeah. he was lying to you? I did. Uh, I did. Yeah. At the time, I kind of did. Because I got off the air and I talked to uh, Robin, who I work with, and I said, I don't know if I buy that. <laughs> you know, I just don't know. But, but it was good that it was there and it was on the record. Yeah. So, you know, the book's been a celebration for me. It really has. It really does. talk to him about you know who and all kinds of other stuff the right. book is remarkable it's called howard stern comes again <laughs> we'll be right back Oh my God! He's I'm an having artist. so much fun. Yes. <laughs> so people, much fun. Do, does it. everyone know that you paint landscapes and animals? And well, I, I talk on the air about the fact <laughs> of painting four years ago. I couldn't draw at all. I couldn't, yeah. and I said for some reason I wanted to uh, art journal. I actually talk about uh, Rosie in this uh, book, mm. Rosie O'Donnell. 
And uh, Rosie, <laughs> one of the best guests I've ever had on my show, and it was a miracle that she was on my show because for years I had, like, like an ass, uh, attacked Rosie. I didn't really give her a chance. And so Rosie and I, uh, we talked, and uh, I, I realized it was just my own anger. But the interview I did with her in the book, she came in, and she was so open, and it, it leveled me. She began to talk about, and it was a really intimate conversation, again, lost her mother at a very young age, and, and she was in so much pain, she starts to describe that she would take a, a, a small baseball bat and break her hands, break Aww. the bones in her Poor hand. Girl. And I said, why? Why do you do something like that? And she said, because I was in so much pain over the loss of my mother that I wanted to feel anything else. Oh, wow. and, and I thought, oh, you know, that's such an honest moment. And, uh, and the fact that she's sharing it with the audience. And then on the lighter side of her, she, I asked her about stand-up. Uh, no, she, she, she art journals and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened was we ended up becoming such good friends that when I started to paint, she wrote me a long email and said, this is how you need, this is how you need to acquire all these materials, here's what I use, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. We're very generous nice. of her, mm -hmm. very nice and, and beautiful. But, but it's a beautiful interview. And uh, even talking about her climb and show business is quite phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, President Bush yeah. paints, too. President Bush paints? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty yeah, well. Maybe, maybe we'll have like Battle of the Bands, a paint off with me yeah. and President All right, Bush. Let, let, let's change the subject for a second because before. What's the matter? You don't want to talk about Rosie? No, I do. You did. It was very good. What happened with Rosie? She's not on the show anymore. No, right? but she's around. What be your anti Rosie or your life Rosie? I don't think about it. You don't even think no. about it. No, but let's talk about Trump before we run out of time. Oh, and Trump. Are we because, running out of time? Yeah, no. well, it goes well, fast. We'll never run here. out of time. It's not like yeah. a two hour show. Let's talk about Trump. Trump is heavily weighted in my book. Yes, There's yes, 11 there different interviews. A lot of interviews. The highlight of of the Trump. interviews of Trump, in my opinion, is this fight he gets into on the air with A.J. Benza, the gossip column. Uh -huh. And it they, they it was unbelievable. That's they start thing. yelling at each other. And what are they fighting over? A woman. Trump, of course. Trump, A.J. had a girlfriend, and Trump was with her. Oh. And Trump was on the air bragging that he stole A.J.'s girl and that he was better sexually. <laughs> now, this is radio fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> it's and he phenomenal. Had Yes. He's rating women yes. during the interviews. I'm reading the book. Like, why is Trump rating women from one to ten? He is rating Donald women Trump. because he's so hot sexually. <laughs> he's so good looking exactly. that he has earned the right now? to rate okay. women. Oh my now. God! You've seen him. He's <laughs> Oh, my God. Sorry, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Because yeah. what do you think of him as president? Because when we were covering him, a lot of his old interviews on your show were used for, like, political fire and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Comparing AIDS to Vietnam. Yeah. Now, I thought that was unfair. I, I have to tell huh. you this. The AIDS to Vietnam, he was not, he was on the air joking. I, there was no way that was a serious comment. Having said that, Look, I'm, I was a huge Hillary Clinton supporter. Yeah. I Not like, oh, she's the lesser of all evils. I was for her before Obama. I loved Obama, but I loved Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. I thought that she was a candidate that was misunderstood, mm -hmm. that her message wasn't coming across. And I think, again, I don't say this would have changed the election, but I think if she would have come on the show, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was begging her. I said I didn't talk to her directly. I think she was afraid of me and, and justifiably. Yeah. But I was trying to say to her, <laughs> can you imagine, I Joy? It's tough. And she played it safe, too. She played it safe. Uh -huh. And that's the warning to whoever becomes the Democratic nominee. Who do you like? Don't play it Who safe. Who do you like? I don't know yet. I was listening to Whoopi in the beginning. It's yeah. almost like there's so many people. I'm on overload. And, yeah. you know, every week no. it's sort of like the flavor of the month. Well, Biden's way ahead. B Biden's way yeah. ahead because I think people want... A, a new president so badly that they want to play it a little safe. A guy who's yeah. been the vice president, right, exactly. he's tested. And, and I feel bad for uh, the women running because it probably is time for a woman to run. But because mm -hmm. everyone's so nervous, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. tightening up and saying right. it better be Joe Biden right. because they got to get the best shot. And the shot. women are incredibly right. smart. The incredibly ones smart. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, there's a lot of good candidates out there and we'll see. But yeah, it was very awkward. Would you for ever me. entertain a Republican? Like Absolutely, again? I okay. voted for Republicans. I mean, um, cool. I'm not. Who have I voted for? Yeah. Uh, when uh, you voted locally, for Bush? I vote. No, I did not vote no. for Bush. I voted for Pataki when he ran. Hmm. I voted for uh, in, New York. Uh, I've, in, in New York. Yeah. I voted for um, who else? I mean, Dukakis? a lot. Of, 
Um, I did. Did I vote for Duke Clinton? Clinton? You voted for Clinton. Oh yeah, Clinton. Right. Love. So you, I vote, Clinton you go good. where I, the yeah, best I voted person for Republicans. Is. I've endorsed can't, Republicans. Just can't think of any of them. Yeah. I'm having a hard time right yeah. now. Yeah. Very nervous. <laughs> but yes, I uh, listen. I feel bad. I see you getting yelled yeah. at all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you. you're feeling oh, overwhelmed, let me know. But Trump give the woman a chance. For God's sake. Why are you looking at me? Run at you. Why are you looking at me? Chasing her out. She's in tears. It's crazy. I came yeah, from the grave. I came work. from the grave. You gotta be a little bit. Be uh, you gotta be the live <laughs> aid whoopie once true. in a while. She came back I from came being back from yeah. the grave. Were you close to death? Here. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's my don't doctors do that. over there. Your doctor? Yeah. We have a doctor yeah. on call. Yeah. Yeah. Would you look at me? I got a problem with my truck. Uh, during the commercial. I have He's... to say, Howard, and I said this to you. <laughs> <laughs> we moved my chair away from Whoopi. I said this to you. I, don't know what you I said this to you during the break. I, I grew up. Uh, I was in college in the 80s. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was I was in college in, in the in the I was in college in the 80s and. Um, I, I found your show so offensive. Um, you used. Thank you. Thank, I, that's what I figured, right? He was, you were a shock jock. Shock You were shock jock. You used the N word a lot. Um, you no, said I really? didn't. I, I yeah. used the N word. Yeah, you did. Wait a second. Hold on. I do. Oh, I say it. that. Whoopee. Wait. Hold on. Wait, wait. No, wait, we wait, had wait, a guy not... on from the Ku Klux Klan. Yes. Who very freely used the N word. Yes. And my belief was, hey. Say it out in the open. Yes. And let, I didn't use the N word. Let's be I'm, very I'm, clear. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's not my thing. It was something, that was, it was something that was, was batted around on your show. I, I'll rephrase no, I, it. And, and by the yeah. way, I make no apology for that. No, and because, you didn't. You didn't then. Because I, I don't like people who live under a rock. I said to the guy, let me hear what you're saying and yes. let's confront it and let's talk about and you, it. You also said some things about Gabby Sidibe. Um, I said but my, a ton of things about people. About people, but but, but my point yes. is, um, it, it was it, I found it so offensive that I was turned off by it. Oh, but, no, that's not and good. crass. But <laughs> but you at, but you're a very different person today. Yes. And I loved your book. Thank you. Um, and I I believe people evolve. And I do too. And that was yeah. part of the point in writing the book. I really I am a big proponent of psychotherapy, and a, and a good loving relationship. And yeah, there has been a lot of personal growth for me, and I think it is possible to change. And I think the show is a lot more balanced. I'm not going to say the show isn't crazy and wild, mm -hmm. but we've also opened it up to some new ideas where people, some really fantastic people, are coming in and feel safe enough to be interviewed and get into some real yeah. conversation. So is that, is that your message to people like me that were like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to buy this new Howard I'm Stern? I'm glad you said that because the book really, I wrote it, and I, and I wasn't super motivated to write a book at first. And I said, well, what if, I think the dream was, what if I could reach someone like you yeah. who was maybe turned off to me, doesn't know what we're doing over on satellite radio, doesn't understand that, you know, people evolved, the show has evolved, and these wonderful discussions are going on. If you've ever wondered what it's like <coughs> to get into the head of Steve Martin or Ellen DeGeneres or so many of these people, there's over 140 people yeah. in this book. Yeah. There's touching moments from guys like Chris Cornell before he committed suicide. He was talking to me about Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, and he said, why didn't Kurt just wait six more months? If he could have held on, maybe his whole world would have changed. And then... And then, just, yeah. yeah, I mean, crazy stuff. So, um, right. yeah, I wanted to reach well, someone like you. It was we particularly. Have to, but also, where do you have to go? We have to do a I'm sorry, but no, I grew up it. listening to you. Joy. Cindy McCain's my mother. I love the show forever. I was never offended. Right. So when you come back, well, right. is, listen, you know. we'll be back with the new and improved <laughs> Howard Stern. <laughs> Look at me. And your mother watches this show. Mom, you're out there. This is my mom. Let me talk to her in her own voice. Listen, you're doing a fabulous <laughs> job. <laughs> I love those ladies, and that whoopee is terrific. <laughs> and you tell her I said it, and she better stop coughing. Get that doctor to do a better job. You know, I'll get a lecture on this appearance, yes. uh, for sure. Yeah, my mother is featured in the book. I saved the best for last. Yeah. And she, um, it's an amazing conversation. Unlike some of the deeper conversations, it's a rather interesting conversation. I demanded to know how I was conceived and in what position. Oh, my God. Yes. I wanted to know, as you do. I know you, you asked your father that. I actually know. 
You do know? I do know. Your father told you? How my he... mother told me on accident, and it's disgusting, oh and I'm certainly not going to say it on the show. Hold it. <laughs> this is an adult program. What position were you conceived? I don't know that. I just know they, where they were. Oh, that's nothing. Oh I wanted to know every detail. <laughs> right. And, of course, uh, I think it's a rather humorous conversation. Right. And I do say in the book, you know, I've always had that relationship with my mother. Which is great. We could always talk openly and joke around, and it's, um, it's quite liberating if you happen to be on the radio. Radio. How about uh, your father? My father is uh, great. My father gave me a lot of radio advice. You know, listen, it's it's tough, and I write this in the book. My father is 96. Oh. My mother is 91. Good for them. And you know, watch. It's weird. I I, I always say I'm I'm like uh, Prince Charles. I'll never get to be king. They just you know they they're hanging in there, and uh, they they just celebrated their 75th wedding anniversary, yes. which is phenomenal. So. Of course I had to write about them, but, uh, you know, look, it's, it's a weird thing. I had a health scare, and I, I revealed it in the book. I was hesitant to reveal it on the air, and I mm -hmm. go into why, and that's a whole other discussion. But when you have a health scare like that, and I'm saying to myself, wait a second, my parents are 96 and 91. Yeah. I'm supposed to live forever. Yeah. Not the rest of you, me. <laughs> and I, I, I was really in shock when yeah. this happened, and they told me, they, they told me a 95% chance of cancer. Yeah. And uh, Where? On my kidney. Uh -huh. And then they went in and they did this uh, very big operation, and it turned out to be just a cyst. Oh. And so it was relief, but I was also like, oh man, that got me thinking. And right. I said, what's the thing I'm most proud of? I'm proud of these interviews I'm doing. I'm proud of so the good. intense conversations we're having on a microphone in front of millions of people. Yeah. And, and I want that to be in a collection. And so that's, that's what motivated me. I think oh, I, I may be a convert, Howard. You're going to listen, and you're going to be a big fan, <laughs> and uh, who knows what's going to happen with us. Yeah. Okay. All right, Howard, is sticking around, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Survive the hour with us. Do you think it went well, and do you think you'll come back? Yeah. Come back? Yeah. I came again, and I tell you what, ladies, I'm going to come again. And often. And often. I'm going to come again. Well, you know, it's a pleasure to actually have you here. It's I had a lot of fun. You know, sometimes I see the yelling and screaming, but listen, you are four top renters. That's right. And you, you are fantastic. We're in the newspaper every day. I know. I know. I, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All the fighting and yeah. carrying up. It works. Up, but it yeah. works. It yeah. works. Yeah. And I love you that guys really for letting for me, me talk. How is some yelling? Members of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.